Die Bescheidene. Item number SCP-2346. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Underwater activities must be prevented within two kilometers around SCP-2346's expected location. SCP-2346's coordinates must be updated monthly following this procedure. A diving team must be sent to SCP-2346's last known coordinates and follow its expected path. Upon visual contact with SCP-2346, the diving team will mark its exact coordinates. Under no circumstances should communication cease between the diving team and the surface crew. The surface crew must permanently assess the diving team's communications consistency. A recovery team must stand ready to extract the divers if they become unresponsive or incoherent. For evidence safety reasons, diving teams must include at least two personnels. Close proximity to SCP-2346 must never exceed eight minutes. Description SCP-2346 is the shipwreck of a trawler first sighted at 51.blank-10.blank, .blank, roughly 25 kilometers southwest of Dersey Island, Ireland. Footnote. See additional documentation. SCP-2346 has no identification markings other than a nameplate reading, D. Bescheidene. There are no records of a ship by this name in any National Fleet register. Even though notable corrosion patches can be observed on the hull and external structures, SCP-2346 remains exceptionally well conserved. Most of the equipment looks pristine and every compartment is accessible. SCP-2346 is mobile. GPS readings, performed as per containment procedure, indicate a movement averaging 52 meters a month with unpredictable course variations, as observed by personnel. Footnote. See experimental dive logs. SCP-2346's mobility appears to increase under certain circumstances. Unmanned localization techniques, such as sonar imaging, were proven unable to detect SCP-2346. SCP-2346 will strongly disrupt an individual's ability to focus and communicate if the subject stays within visual range from SCP-2346 for a prolonged period of time. Subject will lose track of its initial tasks. Subject's environmental awareness will degrade, eventually leading to a gross disregard of safety concerns. Subject will cease their communications or become increasingly irrational and erratic. Over prolonged exposure to SCP-2346, subject will often try to operate or maintain various equipment aboard. Any personnel exposed to SCP-2346 for more than eight minutes must be removed from SCP-2346's vicinity and undergo medical examination. Recovering individuals will retain a high level of confusion and regularly express concerns about various tasks to be performed aboard SCP-2346. Over time, subjects will gradually lose their memory of SCP-2346 and will return to normal behavior. Though 2346.edr-1 and 2 led to a few theories linking SCP-2346's mobility to its supposed ability to retain individuals aboard, those were never confirmed by conclusive evidences. Additional Documentation 2346.ad-1 Document Retrieved by F.A. Blank Original author A. Mori and any non-Foundation personnel involved in this event were submitted to the usual witness management protocols. After Action Report OIC OF-5 A. Mori Ship HMS Herworth Assignment Search and Rescue 27th of November 1991 at 10.07, HMS Herworth received a distress signal originating from cabin cruiser Port McGee Pride. IMO 1585234-MMSI 25010280. HMS Herworth immediately set course toward coordinates 51.blank-10.blank dash dash and initiated radio contact with Port McGee Pride to assess their situation. Port McGee Pride declared four men lost at sea. The missing personnel were identified to the HMS Herworth as trained divers trying to locate the remnants of the SS Latimer. HMS Herworth came alongside Port McGee Pride at 12.37. HMS Herworth began to perform sonar screenings, then sent OF-2 Mason, 1IC, and OF-2 Howley at sea with a search and rescue perimeter restricted to 300 meters. Local elevation profile was suited for minimal decompression stops between dives, allowing Mason's team to perform multiple localization attempts. On the third dive, Mason managed to locate a shipwreck he first identified as the SS Latimer. His following report must be approached with extreme scrutiny. Mason affirms that the shipwreck was in motion along the seabed, displacing a large amount of sediments. He claims that he and B. Howley were able to move aboard despite the ship's instability and low visibility. Mason declares having found three bodies in the accessible parts of the wreck. 
One was located inside a shower cabin without respiratory equipment and clothing. The other two bodies were located in the engine room. According to him, the bodies were holding tools, and one was still gripping on a crew intercom. Mason then panicked and fled to the surface, ignoring DCS procedure and leaving OF-2 Howley aboard the shipwreck. OF-2 Mason is now under sustained medical care. When challenged about his testimony, Mason refused to answer questions and only stated repeatedly that all the fishes were dead. OF-2 Andrea Howley was declared MIA as no crew members were qualified to perform another dive. HMS Herworth reported all of the aforementioned information to Fleet HQ and was subsequently ordered to cease all communications until the arrival of an expert team.